Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about holes and more specifically how to properly model and cut a hole. In this case, it's going to be a round cylindrical hole. Now, a lot of people tend to have a problem with this. So I'm going to go over a couple of techniques and show you how to do it properly. Now, before we get to that part, I'm going to show you what not to do first. Now, when it comes to this, a lot of people have a habit of using a bull object. I do not like the bull object unless I'm modeling something very fast without a hypernerves and I want to knock out some holes very quickly and I don't really care too much about the geometry and what it looks like. So what a lot of people like to do is use a bull. Well, that's going to cause some problems, so let's find out why. I'm going to first create a hypernerve and I'm also going to create a cube and I'm also going to create a cylinder and the cylinder is just going to be used to knock the hole into the side of our cube. Okay, so let's also get a bull object. So the object that's going to be cutting the hole goes in first. The object receiving the hole goes in next. Okay, there we have our nice hole. Everything looks really good, but what if we want to round out those corners? Because right now all of this is very sharp and linear and there's no beveling to it at all. So let's introduce the hypernerve object. So we'll just take the bull, drag that into the hypernerve, and we instantly get this mess. Now the reason why we get this mess is because the bull object, you can see here, is creating a bunch of triangles. And if there's one thing that we've already learned is that triangles are bad and you want to stay away from them when you're using hypernerves. Now we might be able to find somewhat of a workaround in order to maybe help improve the way this is going. For example, we could take the hypernerve and drag it into the bull and then take the cube and make that a child of the hypernerve. And maybe we could take this cube and subdivide it a few times. Okay, so the cube looks okay, but now we've got this hole here. Now, if we were to click on the bull, you can see that everything is made up of these quads and it looks really good until we get to this hole here in the front face of this cube. So what if you didn't want this outer lip here of this hole to be sharp? What if you wanted it to be beveled or rounded? Well, then that would mean you would have to either make the bull object editable and then go in and use the bevel tool and try to bevel that. Or you could take your cylinder object and you would have to model the cylinder to where it actually kind of expands out as it reaches the outside face in order to create the bevel. So I'm sure that you can already see by now just how much trouble this is going to be if we use a bull object to try to cut a hole into the side of this cube. Obviously, this is not the way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is just delete all of that, and now I'm gonna show you how to do it right. Now we could use a cube, but for this example, I'm just gonna use a plane. And I'm gonna take the width and the height segments down to one. That way we have a nice quad polygon face here. Let's pull that up a little bit. All right, so here we have the quad. And I'm going to go to a top view. I'm going to change the display mode. OK, so we want to cut a perfectly round cylindrical hole into the face of this polygon. And we want it to be precise because we want the hole to be perfectly round. We don't want it to be oval shaped or warped in any way. So what a lot of people like to do is they grab the knife tool and they just start hacking the geometry up in order to try to make some kind of hole. So they got all of these weird cuts going all over the place. And then they try to move the points around from all of their hacked up geometry try to push everything into place to create some type of a hole. And in the end, they end up with just a huge mess. So in other words, don't try to eyeball it. That's just gonna cause a lot of problems. Cinema 4D has a couple of tools that we can use 
in order to get a nice precise round hole. So I'm going to undo this a few times. And I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. The first way uses a reference spline. Cinema 4D comes with a preset of splines. You can get to them by going to the spline icon here. A sub menu will pop up and we have all of these presets of splines. Right here we have a circle spline. Now I need to pull this circle spline up so we can see it. And we need to change the color. So in the basic tab here for the spline, we need to change the use color from off to on. And the display color, I'm going to change it to a bright red. Now when we deselect it, now we can see that spline a lot better. So right now this spline is a little too big. So I'm just going to shrink it down to maybe a value of about 100. Okay, so we know that we want our hole to be this big. Now the next problem that we're going to run into here is the fact that we don't know where to put our points at because right now we don't have any points to line up along this reference plane so that means we're going to have to make some cuts into this plane. So with the plane selected we need to go into polygon mode and we're just going to select this polygon and we're going to right click and choose subdivide and I'm going to click the little black box here to get that to pop up and I only want to subdivide it by a value of 1. So we'll click OK and now that has given us a subdivision value of 1 which splits it into 4. Okay, so I'm going to go to point mode. Now we have four places here where we know we need a point to be. Now if you notice we have this vertical and horizontal edge and these edges meet up exactly in the center of the outside of our reference spline. So I'll get the doodle tool and I'm just going to change the color here to something that we can see uh, just so I can uh, highlight this a little better. So we know that our reference spline meets this edge right here, right here, and we have one down here, and we also have one up here. So what we need to do is change the interpolation or the intermediate point mode of this spline to where we have a point lined up here, here, and the top and the bottom. Now that's only four points, and I would like to double that up to eight. So we need to change the visual appearance of this circle spline to where it has a point on each one of these corners here but it also has a point here in the center here one here and one here as well so to do that we'll just click on the circle spline and we'll change the intermediate points mode to uniform and we'll take this down to a value of one now when we do that now we have point on our reference spline that's meeting the edges of our plane. Now this is working out pretty well for the sides and the top and the bottom. However, you can see that we don't have any points up here with these corners. So what that means is that we're going to need to make a cut. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways how to do this. One of them is the manual way, and I'm sure sometimes you're going to face this problem. And the next way will be using a bevel method. So we want to right click and choose the knife tool. We're going to be in line mode. And what we want to do is we want to make a cut from this point here on our reference spline up to the top point. And then from here over to this side. And we just want to go all the way around our reference spline making these cuts. All right, so we've run into a little bit of a problem. And that problem is We've got four big triangles right here in the center, and we need to get rid of them. So we can get rid of them, and we could also create the additional point we need to line up with the corners here of our reference spline. So back to point mode, choose the knife tool again, and what we want to do is we want to make a cut from the center of this edge here up to the adjacent point in the corner. And we want to do the same for all four corners. So right in the middle of this edge to the corner, and then the last one here on this side. So now all we need to do is select 
these points and line them up with the reference line. Just like that. Now we can turn the reference spline off, we can go into polygon mode, select these four faces here in the middle, hold down control, and then we can just extrude them down. Now in previous versions of Cinema 4D, in order to extrude, you'd have to right click and then use the extrude tool. But there's one thing that I've noticed with R13 is that you don't even have to go to the extrude tool in order to extrude. All you need to do is hold down control or command if you're on a Mac and while you have control held down, click and drag and that will extrude for you. So this bottom face down here, I'm going to delete that just so we can have an open hole. Now if we were to take this plane and put this in a hypernerve object to smooth it out for us, you can see that it's a little too smooth. So what I want to do is make some cuts. So I'm going to take the knife tool in loop mode and I'm going to make a cut up here around the top. And by doing that, it's going to tighten up this top edge. So when the hypernerve is turned back on, you can see that now it's a lot sharper than what it was. And we can go a little sharper if we wanted to by making an additional cut up on the top surface around the edge there, turn the hypernerve back on, and now that edge has sharpened up more. So if we look at it from a top view, you can see there we have our perfect round cylindrical hole. All right, now that was using the manual method where we actually had to cut the edges and then take those points and move them into place. So now let me show you a much faster way of doing this. Okay, so here is the same plane and the same circle spline as we had earlier. So what we want to do is we want to select this face here and we want to subdivide it just the way we did before with a value of 1. Now we have our subdivided plane. However, there still isn't enough edges to give us the correct amount that we need to line up with our reference spline. So what we need to do is make some more. So I'm going to grab the knife tool, I'm going to go to line mode, and I want to make a big X right down the middle. So I want to go from this corner all the way down to this corner down here. And I want to do the same from this corner all the way down to this one. Now I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, you said triangles were bad, why have you made all these triangles? Well that would be a very good question, and the answer to that is because that is going to give us the extra edges we need. You notice that they are lining up with the corners of our reference spline. And in order to solve the issue with these triangles, we'll go to point mode and we want to select the very center point in the very middle. We want to right click and choose bevel and we want to bevel this point. Now notice when we start to bevel the point, look at the pattern that we're getting. And all we need to do is line it up with our reference spline, and there we go. Now there is a little bit of an issue here, and that would be we have these odd edges here in the very middle of our hole. So all we need to do is just select those inner polygons there and just delete them. Now we'll drop this into a hypernerm, and now we have a nice round hole. Now if you want to extrude this, then all you need to do is go into edge mode, hit UL to bring up the loop selection, select those edges there, and then we need to get the axis handle back so we can extrude, hold down control, and then extrude downward. So you can see that this method here is faster. However, sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where you won't be able to do this, that you'll have to make the cuts manually like I showed you the first time. All right, so that wraps up this lesson on round cylindrical holes, and more than likely, we're probably going to be going over this more in the other lessons as well. So thanks for watching.